raised in Louisiana, and uh, first in New Orleans, then Lafayette, and uh, now she she feels at home in Key West because I guess it's fun in Louisiana. Okay, she taught speech, debate, drama, video production, and mock trial at Lafayette High School for decades. After retiring, she moved to Key West and she began to volunteer with different organizations and she also worked uh, at Fast Buck Freddy's. She started working with the People's Theater of Key West and uh, then she was on the board of directors when it became the Fringe Theater. After substitute teaching at Key West High School, uh, she asked the Fringe Theater to support the project Shakespeare in the Schools. So we'll have some culture today. And um, anyway, uh, the, and they got a grant from, for this from the uh, Florida Keys Art Council. And they've been doing, she'll tell you more about it, but welcome Judy. Thank you, thank you. One thing I learned from my speech teacher in high school is that you need to project. And if they can hear you, they will follow. So one of the things that I love is in high school, Speech became a subject I fell in love with, and then as I went through college and got into more activities, suddenly I'm looking at every school in this county has one speech class, and it's really drama. There is no public speaking, there is no debate, it is unbelievable, and so when I am looking at teachers and saying, what would you like for us to try to stimulate your students with? And they said, we drag through Shakespeare because they have such a hard time reading it. It's not their words. I said, well, no, and it won't be. But it is their <laughs> world if they just look at it through different glasses. So Tammy Shanley and I decided that this was a project we really wanted to have come into the schools. It's been three years in the making, and we have not even touched all the schools, but now they're calling us instead of me calling them. So it really is a wonderful experience, but my lords and my ladies, Thank you for welcoming us to your little village today. And we have a band of merry players that would love to show you the works of the bard. Now remember, the bard was never meant to be read. He was meant to be seen and listened to. So I ask you to please allow our merry group to show you the taming of the shrew. There was a lover who had his last with a hay and a hoe and a hay. Nanny no with the hay. A nanny nanny no. That o'er the green corn fields did pass in springtime, in springtime. The only pretty ring time when birds do sing. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Sweet lovers love the spring. more than e'er I did. Ho, 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 how I long to have some chat with her. Signor Baptista, you asked me, shall you send your daughter here to me? I pray you do. I will attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. Say that she rail. Why then, I'll tell her plain, she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frowns. Then I'll say she looks as clear as morning roses, newly washed with dew. Say she be mute and will not say a word. Then I'll commend her volubility and say she uttereth piercing eloquence. If she do bid me pack, 
I'll give her thanks, as though she bid me stay by her a week. And if she deny to wed, I'll crave the day when I shall ask the bands and win be married. But here she comes. And now, Petruchio, speak. Good morning. Well, that's your name, I hear. Well, have you heard something hard of hearing? They call me Katharina, that to talk of me. Ooh. You lie, in fact, for you are called plain Kate and Bonnie Kate, and sometimes Kate the Cursed. But Kate, oh, the prettiest Kate in Christendom. Kate of Kate Hall, by super dainty Kate, for dainties are all Kates, and therefore Kate, take this of me, Kate, to my consolation. Hearing thy Mildness praised in every town, thy virtues spoke of, and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs, myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Moved? In good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first. You were immovable. Why? What's a movable? A joined stool. Ah, now it's hit. Come, sit on me. <gasps> Asses are made to bear it. So are you. Oh, no. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such jade as you of me, you of me, you mean. Oh, alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee, for knowing thee to be but young and light. Hmm? Too light for such a swain as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Ah, no! <laughs> should be, no, should buzz. Oh, well, Tayan, and like a buzzard. Oh, slow winged turtle, shall a buzzard take thee? <laughs> Aye, for a turtle as he takes a buzzer. Oh, come, come, you wasp. In faith, you are too angry. If I be waspish, best be ah! Ah! Oh, no! My remedy is then to pluck it out. Aye, if the fool can find it where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting, hmm? 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 In his tail! Oh, yeah. In his tongue! Oh, no. Whose tongue? Yours if you talk of tails, and so farewell. What? With my tongue in your tail? <laughs> Nay, come again, good Kate. I am a gentleman. Oh, that I'll try. I swear, I'll cuff you if you strike again. So may you lose your arms. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. If no gentleman, why then? No arms. Oh, a herald, Kate. Mm. Put me in thy box. Oh, what is your crest? A cock's comb? No, 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 no. A combless cock, so Kate will be my head. Oh, no cock of mine, you crow too like a craven. Nay, come, Kate, come, you must not look so sour. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why, here's no crab, and therefore look not well, sour. There is, there is. Then show it me. Had I a glass, I would. What, you mean my face? Well aimed of such a young one. Oh, now, by St. George, I am too young for you. And yet you are withered. <laughs> it is with cares. I care not. Nay, hear you, Katie. Soon you say not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I heard you were passing gentle, but now I find report a very liar, for thou art pleasant, gamesome, passing courteous, but slow in speech, yet sweet as springtime flowers. Thou canst not frown, thou canst not look askance, nor bite the lip as angry witches will, but thou with mildness entertainst thy wooers, with gentle conference, soft and affable. Yes, affable. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the world report that Kate doth limp? Hmm? Oh, slanderous world. Kate, like the hazel twig, is straight and slender and as brown in hue as hazelnuts and sweeter than the kernels. Oh, let me see thee walk. Thou dost not halt. Oh, no. Go, fool! And whom thou keepest command? <sighs> Did ever Diane so become a grove as Kate this chamber with her princely gait? Oh, be thou Diane, and let her be Kate, and then let Kate be chaste, and Diane sportful. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore from my mother wit. Oh, witty mother, witless else her son. Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. <sighs> Mary, Mary, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. And therefore, setting all this chat aside, thus in plain terms, your father hath consented that you shall be my wife, and will you, will you, kneel you, I will marry you. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn, for by this light, whereby I see thy beauty, 
thy beauty that doth make me like thee well. Thou must be married to no man but me, for I am he and born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild cake to a cake conformable to other household cakes. <laughs> oh, you know, so father, never make denial. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. Oh, I'll see thee hanged first. Father?